My name's Anna and I'm working for a small company called Hiring Hub and it's been a topic of conversation for us for a while, especially being a very small development team and not necessarily having uh, much budget or resources to try and even kind of understand it and then deal with what we needed to do for GDPR. So just quickly, Hiring Hub, we're building a kind of recruitment marketplace platform which joins kind of uh, rated and reviews agencies to employers. So there's quite a lot of data that's kind of processed within our, within our sites as well. So I joined as CTO uh, end of last year and um, I don't know really what that means yet I guess but I'm a bit of everything from desktop support to product development to WordPress developers, my most recent job title, um, facilities, all sorts of different things. Um, and then there's my favourite favourite responsibility which is information security manager as well. So I don't know if for those of you who remember uh, me from on the beach, um, I've got really bad timing when it comes to compliance issues in this role because I literally got landed this job title as well uh, when it was PCI DSS, so all the kind of credit card stuff as well. Uh, so I just start here and then uh, my boss goes, oh, I've heard of this thing, GDPR, do you know what it means? I'm like, oh, no, <laughs> I'll find out. Um, so that's what we've been doing for a while. Um, okay, so um, what does it stand for? So it's the General Data Protection Regulation and effectively it's the same as the Data Protection Act of 19, let me just check the date, 98. Um, and effectively um, there's a lot of similar kind of principles in there, or the underlying principles are the same. Now, does anybody know what the principles are? Anybody want to take a guess? How many do you reckon there are? Six. <laughs> oh, not bad. <laughs> not bad. Now this is a key, this is Q stolen slide because obviously my slides are just text, but this one's a bit more whizzy. So I stole this. Uh, but there's seven principles, um, and six of them existed previously. So making sure that you know the data was fair and lawful that you are holding that you had a real purpose for the data that you were holding. You know, I want a job, so, you know, it's, you know, it's reasonable that I'm holding, you know, I'm giving my CV to somebody and they're storing it. Um, that you'd keep the minimum amount of data that you might need for that purpose. That you'd try and keep it up to date when you're processing it. That you'd always keep it confidential and secure. Um, and that you'd limit the forms that you'd keep it in that would be identifiable. But what's different with the seventh principle is they've really added some accountability and liability across the whole spectrum as well, which means that um, people are really looking to kind of tighten up on everything. You know, there's potential fines now and reputational damage as well um, that comes from that. So that's why, you know, we're getting all these GDPR emails because people are kind of panicking a little about it um, and trying to understand what do we do? What does it what does it mean? So what, um, what does it apply to? So it applies to any personal data that can reasonably identify an individual. Um, so all of these are you know, perfect examples of things that that could include. But one thing that I learned is that it's not just personal data from a consumer perspective, it's also personal data from a company or work perspective as well. So my work email address um, that's held by a supplier of us, for example, would be in scope for this as well. Okay, so what did this mean for Hiring Hub, um, or at least for our uh, small, small team? So we figured out that there's two main areas where we had data and that we had to look after it. So we were controllers of our customer data, and that was our agency and supplier user data, um, our supplier data and our employee data. So that was data that we actually owned and we had consent from people um, either you know, because they worked for us um, and to use their NA number for, um, for the purposes of payroll, for example, or through terms of business, that agency had given us their details so that we could contact them and phone them for the purposes of the business of engaging in our kind of services. Um, and mainly that kind of around email, phone number, address, national insurance number, bank details, those things. Then we had also figured out that we were a processor for some data, so we didn't own it. So an agency would put forward a CV within our platform 
they might put forward some details for a telephone interview on our platform, but we effectively didn't own that candidate data at all. But we had to ensure that the controller of that data had consent in order to process that data on our system as well. So that's our small team. We've got four of us. Um, sorry for my cheesy grin. And as you can tell, it was a bit of a last. Uh, it, it was taken today. I don't wear that T-shirt, this T-shirt, every, every day. Um, so yeah, what did it really mean for us? Like I mentioned before, we're a really small team, we're a really small budget. And like with any kind of startup business, you really, before you invest in kind of shoring up and maturing certain things, you probably need to spend some money making sure that you've got a viable business um, and security and GDP bar haven't been budgeted for in our funding uh, at all. So, um, so what did we do? So we educated ourselves um, pretty cheaply. You know, we didn't, uh, although initially I kind of panicked and we were speaking to a few consultants about what did it mean, at, you know, £1,200 a day, we thought, well, we can, we can find out a little bit more about this. We don't think that we need a consultant. So I have been to most GDPR events in Manchester and some other cities, um, especially if they've got free food and, and drink, <laughs> then I'm definitely there. Um, you know, I've read blogs. Um, we've kind of begged, stolen and borrowed um, lots of kind of resources and things from people as well. And really just kind of given ourselves a basic understanding of, of what we need to do and also trying to understand where our risk points were for the business. Um, this maybe comes back to not stolen, but kind of we acquired a GDPR policy pack. And that was actually really helpful. I mean, it was pr it's pretty, pretty thick, but actually it helped us understand kind of a benchmark of where we, where we needed to get to with all our data. So for example, it had a secure coding policy, it had a patch management policy, it had an encryption policy, password policy, data retention, asset management, all sorts of things, which gave us a basic understanding of how we should deal or deal with some of these things and what the standards were that we needed to work towards. So that meant we could do a bit of a gap analysis and go, right, we're kind of here, you know, and we need to be here. What's all the stuff that we need to do? And then we kind of work with the business to kind of prioritise what was important or most important. So we then decided we need to find where all that data is. We knew we had this customer data, candidate data, CV, phone numbers. Um, but I guess with like any small company that's kind of maturing, there were you know, things in spreadsheets, there were things on people's machines, uh, there was various um, kind of servers, uh, our live servers, test servers, staging, local machines with copies of databases on potentially. Um, we had you know, CDN, S3 storage, we had our backups, we had printouts maybe lying about the office. Um, I'm making it sound really bad, uh, it sounds like we just had data everywhere, but these are the things that we had to start looking just to make sure um, where is the data and then how can we make it more secure as well. Um, also logging and analytics was one as well, just to look to make sure that we weren't um, holding any data there too. Okay, so we found and we kind of mapped out all the data. And for us, because we're a small company, actually a lot of, a lot of those kind of places or locations, especially from a technical perspective, were from third party suppliers. So, um, you know, like our hosting, our email service, um, even our DevOps kind of operations is third party. So we um, engaged with them to help understand if they were moving to compliance and what they were doing and actually that was fantastic to help us learn as well learn as well it's like oh what are you doing oh we know maybe we should do that as well uh, so that's really helped then once we'd found it um we really kind of tried to understand did we really need it was it important is it just because you know we haven't had a you know assured up retention policy that we've got quite a lot of customer data um, so we actually deleted a lot of data that we didn't need um, or we anonymised what we, what we did need to keep. Um, so that was quite, that was almost an opportunity as well because I think from a technical perspective that's made it a lot easier to manage, cost less than storage and a lot of other things as well. Okay. So then we looked at the data that we had left and we were like, who's got access to it? Um, so this back to kind of passwords as Carl, um, you know, we invoked kind of password, uh, password policies or stronger password policies. Again, being a small company, there'd been this kind of, oh, you know, I'll just borrow that password, you know, a shared password that was written down, printed on the wall, although that might be a safer place to keep it 
from what we were saying here. Um, simple things like making sure that people are locking their screen, creating a bit of a starter and leaver process. Even though there's only, you know, there was only kind of nine people when we started, the amount of access that's kind of been given on an ad hoc basis, and then someone would leave, and it would be like a few weeks later, oh, they, you know, they potentially still got a password to a live production system. It's like, ah, you know, we need to get a process in place to make sure um, that we don't do that again. Um, so that was access to the data. And then anything that's left, any of the data that's left, looking at making sure that we're securing it as much as possible. So that's kind of the point we're at at the minute, is looking at improving the encryption of our application data, um, but also you know, making sure that disk encryption's on, on, the, on the laptops for, for users if they've got anything downloaded. Um, yep. Um, and generally, kind of continuing to comp create processes um, and assurances as we kind of grow the code base as well. So looking at, um, oh, we got it, sorry, you know, ongoing vulnerability scanning, regular pen tests, um, using, for example, Breakman in the release pipeline to make sure that we're continually just checkpointing where we are. Try to document a little bit more so that when people are coming in, they're kind of understanding how things are working, what we're using. And looking at implementing kind of privacy by design, which is something that GDPR talks about, which is really why with any kind of new development you're doing, kind of really thinking about that data. Do you need it? Where are you going to store it? Who's going to access it? Um, so that you can make, continually make sure that you kind of keep this up. Uh, so what's next? Um, so really, I think we're going to try and work on how do we automate a lot of this stuff as we move forwards. I think because we're a small company, a lot of it is around kind of process. You know, it's kind of process driven. We can't afford a kind of all singing, all dancing, GDEPR, one kind of push solution. And a lot of it is kind of workarounds and best endeavors t to make sure that we can follow the processes. So hopefully as we move forward, we'll be able to automate a lot of that for the business and help them. Um, but just generally, um, it, it's never, it's never going to be done. It's kind of, it's not a, you get to the, I think it's the 25th of May where it officially comes in, which is why your emails will be hammered. I think even more so for the next week. Apologies if you get one from us. Um, but it's just, it's kind of one of those, it's those ongoing processes. And it's really important to kind of bed in and educate people within your teams to make sure they understand what they need to do. So thank you. You're all still awake, so that's the start. <laughs>